some more breaking news this hour. An Ottawa academic accused of bombing a synagogue in Paris in 1980 has been found guilty by a court in France. The case began earlier this month after 15 years of legal proceedings while he remained in the nation's capital. Hassan Diab reacted to the verdict moments ago from Ottawa. We have to see how Canada will behave like and respect and honor its word when they discovered that it was all, you know, somehow not fair. And the Prime Minister himself put it in words, strong words, what happened to Hassan Diab shouldn't have happened and shouldn't happen in the future too. That will be enough for us and to go and work on the uh, reform of the extradition law. Following this case for several years, the host of Power and Politics, David Cochran, now brings us the latest. Well, we just heard there from Hassan Diab and his lawyer, Don Bain, who represented him uh, for free throughout his many years uh, of ex extradition battle here in Canada, when France initially submitted its extradition request to the Canadian government, calling Hassan Diab it its prime suspect in the Copernic Street bombing, Rue Copernic bombing, in 1980 that killed four people, wounded another 46. Um, what we heard there is not unexpected. I've been speaking to Dr. Diab, to his family, to his supporters in the run-up to this. They have been bracing for a guilty verdict verdict, despite the weakness of the physical evidence against Hassan Diab in this case. Uh, there, there's a rundown now of the reasons for this judgment being read out in the court in Paris. And uh, what the evidence that the judges appear to be relying on in um, in bringing down this conviction and a sentence of life in prison with an immediate issuing of an arrest warrant for Hassan Diab to start serving his sentence is the confiscation of a, one of his passports, which he said he lost, which was found in the hands of a man who was an organizer for a pro-Palestinian terrorist group in the early 1980s that they claim shows that Hassan Diab was in Paris on the day of the bombings and proves that he was a part of, um, of a Palestinian, pro-Palestinian terrorist organization that French prosecutors believe was tied to this bombing. The reason he was released in the first place and the reason why his supporters are so adamant that this is a political prosecution is that the physical evidence against Hassan Diab drastically falls apart. Prosecutors have relied on handwriting comparisons of his handwriting decades later to handwriting samples uh, signed by the man who is believed to be the bomber in this uh, terrible attack in 1980 and compared it to Hassan Diab's and said this is him. Um, the initial attempt at handwriting evidence was discredited when it found that the bomber's handwriting was compared not to Hassan Diab's handwriting, but to the handwriting of his ex-wife. Uh, a follow-up comparison of the bomber's writing with actual Diab handwriting came to the same conclusion as the other handwriting uh, comparison, uh, finding the link that the French prosecutors, Diab and his lawyers would argue, we're looking for in spite of the evidence. Uh, numerous independent uh, handwriting experts have discredited the French handwriting samples, but yet it had, all of this evidence has been considered as a basis for this conviction. The other two key points of evidence, Arthi, that uh, Diab and his supporters point to as evidence of his innocence is the fact that of all the fingerprints that were found in the crime scene, the getaway car, the hotel, the various papers that may have been touched by the bomber, none of those fingerprints match Hassan Diab. None of that evidence was shared with Canadian authorities when extradition was requested uh, 15 years ago. And the third bit of evidence that they point to um, that suggests that Hassan Diab was an innocent man is that there are multiple alibis in Beirut that have him in Lebanon. In the, run, in the period in which French prosecutors say he was in Paris executing the attack, including on the day of the bombing, when multiple witnesses put Hassan Diab in Lebanon writing university exams on the day the bomb went off. So now this, the question remains, does France make an extradition request? And if so, how does the Canadian government respond to that? That is the CBC's David Cochran, host of Power and Politics. Thank you.